Hello. Today we're going to have a little look at the basics of using InDesign. InDesign is an industry standard piece of software for layout and presentation of graphical work. It is used in the design of book creation, posters and various graphics. It's incredibly useful. Once you've logged into your Creative Cloud account and you have opened up InDesign, you'll be presented with a page a little bit like this. It will show you your most recently opened files, but for today we're going to start a new and create a new one. So we start by going to create new. Then we will go across at the top to print and this will give us a selection of print size documents. So if I go to all view all presets here and I'm going to select A3. Over on the right hand side, we then have an option of choosing whether we wish our page to be portrait or landscape. So I'm going to select landscape to begin with. We can also give it a title, so we will call this project one. You can create a number of pages to begin with, but don't worry, it's easiest just to add pages in once you get going and you know how many you need. We can also add some columns and I'll show you those in a minute. So let's add four to begin with and change our gutter size, the gap between the columns to five millimeters. We can also adjust our margins if we wish. I'm going to make them all 10 millimeters. If you want to make any differences, if you just break the chain there, you can make your bottom margins and top margins bigger or smaller or your inside or outside margins. But don't worry too much about that. Again, you can change this at any time. So we're just going to go to create. Here we can see our first page has been created. We've got our four columns that I showed you just a moment ago. And here are the five millimeter wide gutters between each column. Here are our borders around the outside, exactly 10 millimeters around each edge. If we want to make any adjustments, we can just go to Layout at the top of the screen. I appreciate that's slightly cut out from this video, but if you go to Layout, Margins and Columns, you can see how easily you can adjust them at any stage. But for now, we'll stick with four. The first thing I'd get you to do, mine has automatically come up this way because I use InDesign regularly, but at the very top of your screen, it will probably come up in Essentials mode. For the purposes of what things we're going to go through today, we'll probably need a few more tools. So just turn it from essentials into advanced. Advanced tends to give us the greatest range of tools, but don't worry, you don't need to know what all of them do just yet. Over on the right hand side where it says pages, <coughs> select those and you'll see here we have got one page, page one. If I go down to the bottom of my pages, column and I click create new page so that square icon with the peeled over corner there you can see we can create more pages. Lots of people ask when the first time they use InDesign why is that, have I got one page over here and then page two and three are a double like so. Well it's a program often used for designing books so this is just your first inside page when you've opened the cover of the book this is your first inside page and typically this page would be the back of page one, and then this will be the <clears throat> page two, as it were, in book form. But don't worry too much about this. If you go to print it out, they'll obviously come out as individual sheets, or if you select double-sided printing, that'll help explain what will be page one and page two. We can move our pages around at any point as well, simply by dragging them and moving them into a different location. Next, I'm just going to talk to you about masters. So a master page, anything that we apply to a master page is something that we will then apply to all of our pages. So in the pages tab, if I double click here, you'll see I've just isolated two pages like so. And these are my masters or these are master A. So what I thought we might do on this page is just create a very simple header, which you might want on every single page. It might be your name, page number, a title of the project. So I'm going to start by potentially just drawing a little box in the top left hand corner. It's up to you, obviously, how you stylize it. 
And here where I've got my fill color and this is my line color. You see with this red line through it, it says there is no fill. And here where I've got line color, it's black. And we can see on my screen, I've got a black box, black line box with no fill. We can see through it. You've got these arrows above where you can just swap them over. So I might just very simply do something like that. You can, of course, at any stage, adjust your color by double clicking. And if we move them around, click like so, you could change the color if you wish. I think for this, I might just keep something quite simple and dark. So I'll go for a black, like so, and just bring that slider all the way down. Next, I want to put some text in there. So I might put, give my initials EJC Project 1. So I've just created that using the little text box type tool there. If we select our typeface, we can choose we can choose our typeface. So I'm going to select Gil Sands. You've got a drop down menu where you can view your typefaces, but I know that Gil Sands is a nice general purpose font. It also is a font where it gives you lots of different options for using italics or bold. Do be careful, some fonts will just have one sort of format to them, so it won't enable you to you know, highlight bits of text. If you want to put a quote in italics, for example, it might not allow you to do that. So do pick a, a popular font, which will typically have lots of variety of styles. So just go to Gil Sands regular, like so. I can adjust my type size up here, so maybe we'll go to 30 point, something like that. And again, with the color here, I might just try and select something that might be quite light or complementary to the black. So I might pick a, a light, a light blue. So I need to obviously select my typeface first, or I can double click down here. In fact, I might just select white. And I'll place that inside there like so. Now, if I had created my type first and the box afterwards, Typically what would happen is the type would be behind the box. So you can just by double clicking or two finger click on a, on a trackpad or right clicking. If you go to arrange, you can send things to back or bring things forward. So at the now if you see my type, it will be behind, behind the, the box. And if I click on the box and double click, right click there, go arrange and send that to back, it will bring the typeface forwards. So now I'm just going to exit my master pages over here on the right hand side. And so if I look at page two, for example, or page three, you can see it's got this title on there. You will note, though, on all my right hand pages, I haven't put anything on there because I've only applied this to the left hand master page. So if I go back in and I select that, I might just copy it, command C, command V, move it across place that over on the top there. Now I will have something on every page. You can of course do something different on right hand pages and left hand pages, but generally when you're getting used to designing a project like this, it's best to keep it quite uniform. As that way, if you want to move a right hand page to a left hand page, the formatting will always be the same. <clears throat> so I'm gonna just move into my page two here, like so. And we're going to have a little look about putting in type. So I'm going to draw a new type box down here. Um, and it will, as you know, snap to the guides you've got behind them. You don't have to use them, of course. And sometimes you want, might want type going further across the page. Not everything needs to align with them. But it's useful to have that consistency going through. I'm just going to insert some placeholder text, just so you don't have to watch me type. Um, to fill in some text and we can obviously just you know type in there like so again you might want to select all of your type so I'll just press command a and again select your typeface so I'm going to use gill sounds regular 12 point all the way through what you will notice is once you start hitting the enter key this plus or you typing beyond the size of the box, you will get this plus symbol, which comes up down the bottom of your text box. That is just telling you that your text is running outside of the box. 
So if I just move that down a little bit further, if I now click on that plus sign, you can see my cursor's picked up that type and I can now draw another text box like so. And so anything I do in here, one text box will flow nicely into the other. So this is a nice way to then insert maybe a picture or something like that in there. We're now just going to have a quick look at inserting pictures into an InDesign. What I'd recommend you do is have a folder which you keep in a consistent place with all of the images in. Try and be really organized. Have a folder called InDesign Images and within that maybe your separate images for each page or each section of your project. InDesign works quite differently from other pieces of software. It doesn't hold those full images in the file. As if you were creating a book with hundreds of images or a project with hundreds of images, you would find that, that all of those hundreds of images would be such a large file size, it would really struggle to keep rendering them out as you're flicking through the project. So InDesign creates little preview files so you can see what the image would look like but it won't be a high resolution full size image. So to do this, to place, to bring images in, instead of copy and pasting them in or dragging and dropping them in, we'll have a folder which we keep in a consistent location. I'm just going to file at the top of my screen and place. I've got a folder called pictures and I've got project one InDesign images. And so I might just select these two pictures here. If we want to select multiples, I can just press the shift key and select them both. Or you can click on one, press command, click on another to select individual ones from a list. Probably be easier if I show you on the mood board. You can just select individual ones pressing the command key. Or we press command A, select them all. So I'm just going to select a couple of these like so and click open. Now I can just drag and drop my image in like so. And you'll see the next one's on the cursor. If you don't want to add in another one, you can hit the escape key or you can just, or you can bring it in. Try to drag it in um, as if you just click, it will come up full size. So we can see quite easily now, quite nicely now, we've got a lot of control over our type and over our images and where we put them in and making things look really nice and neat um, to these grids. Other thing I would just point out about type, it's always a preset in, in InDesign for it to hyphenate all of your text. So what I suggest you do is select it all, Command A, and at the top of your screen, if you just go down to this paragraph symbol here and go across, turn hyphenate off. As you'll see, I'll obviously now need to just adjust the placement of my images a little bit like so but it looks much neater. We also, at the top of our screen, our type, we can adjust the how it presents itself. So we can just have it aligned to the left or justified and aligned to the left, like so, which I think looks probably the neatest, but it's up to you. Next, um, we're gonna have a little look at placing some more images in. Sometimes it's really useful if we create a mood board and you need to put 100 images in. Instead of dragging and dropping them as boxes um, where they're all going to be different sizes, we can preset in InDesign how we want to present our images and create a frame which we apply them into. It's very simple. So on the over on the left-hand side in our toolbar, we've got this rectangular frame tool. If I click and just drag a box out like so with it, but before I let go, if you use your arrow keys, so if I press my up arrow key, I'm creating some, uh, some horizontal boxes. And if I press the arrow key this way, I'm creating some, um, creating some more boxes this way. So I'm just going to align them something like that. It's quite hard to see with the grid behind it, uh, but as you see, I've now got one, two, three, four, four by four, so I've got 16 boxes here, which I might choose to apply images into. Again, applying images, I'm going to do it in exactly the same way. I'm just going to go to File and Place. This will help form the link. Go to my Project 1. This time I'll select my mood board. I don't have 16 images here, but I'll 
hopefully you'll get the gist of how they all apply. And now all you have to do is click in each box. You don't need to drag them out, just simply click and they will place in like so. What you will notice is these are quite cropped in, these pictures. If I double click on them, you can see the actual size of the image. You see this brown box here. Now it'd be quite painstaking to go through and, and you know adjust this brown box and you know scale them down inside all of them, but of course by all means you can. There is a quicker, simpler way is if I select all of those boxes up at the top of my screen where we've got this auto fit button, you can either just just above that uh, here where it says fill frame proportionally. If you just click that button, you'll see now it will scale the images, fit them in. Now obviously these are landscape boxes. If you've got a portrait photograph, it is going to be outside. So this port picture is a bit cropped. So you may wish to just double click and just pull them down so you can show the content that, that you want like so. At any time as well, you might have an image we say, actually this one is, is brilliant. I'm going to copy and paste it. But I would quite like to see this one a bit bigger. So you can adjust adjust the outside of it like so. Because I've ticked the auto fit button it will scale the whole thing but if I've got that unticked which it, where it is in its default mode if I select that like so it hasn't scaled it's just scaled the kind of frame of where it can sit but if I now click the fill frame proportionally button it will fill that in like so. So hopefully that's all the basics to get you going. Obviously, you just save your file as normal, um, save, choose a location um, and the title we gave it originally. Um, and if you need to create a PDF, you just go to File, Export and select Adobe PDF Print. Click Save and Export like so. Hopefully that's enough to get you going. Um, wish you all the best of luck with that.